everybody. This is Grandmaster Jacek Stopa, and I'm here for yet another video. Um, this time we will be discussing the F3 variation in the NIMZO. From the white side, um, this is uh, something that I have uh, uh, been using for around seven years now. I mostly played this um, back in 2013, 14, and uh, uh, 15. Uh, played multiple good games here. I also had a chance to face uh, Vishwanathan Anand in the year 2014 in London in the uh, rapid preceding the, um, the main event. And we made a draw after a pretty nice and eventful game there. Um, so let us just quickly uh, uh, take a look at that here in this intro chapter. And also... Um, we'll just, you know, briefly cover what these, what this variation really kind of comprises of. Um, there are basically two main options here, or three, I'd say, okay. D5 and C5 are the most popular ones, but there's also castles and knight C6. We will be looking at all of them uh, in turn with some uh, focus on theory, latest developments, and as well as some practical games. But uh, for now, let's just um, uh, maybe start with, with my game here against Anand, um, and then I'll show a little bit more detail on some of those lines there and uh, discuss the main ideas. Um, well, actually, okay, before I move on with the game, let's, let me just first you know, discuss why White would like to make this strange looking move F3. This is just not exactly, you know, like a, um, the most, you know, logic, uh, the most like a natural move to make. Um, I'm sure you guys know that, you know, maybe Queen C2, or Knight F3. Um, these moves are are more uh, more natural, more popular. Uh, or E3, right? Also, is a, is a very kind of a, a, a normal move, um, you know, with these kinds of ideas. Uh, so why why f3? Okay, well, in some of the lines, uh, you know, black wants to bring the knight over to e4 and maybe follow it up with f5, b6, bishop b7, and um, focus uh, focus on this diagonal. Um, so it's in white's best interest to uh, to really uh, you know don't allow that. Uh, so this is this is one of the one of the ideas. Another one is it would be nice to be in total control of the center. So f3, let's say if castles, there is e4, right? So uh, so this is, you know, if white can sustain this kind of a center, obviously it's very good. Um, of course, it's not like black is without tricks. You know, black has already castled. It's ahead in development, so it will be uh, uh, also, you know, uh, you, can, you can expect black will have his own his own play here. Um, so e4 uh, is the main idea. Um, some weaknesses, you know, maybe in some cases this can be somehow exploited. Uh, it's maybe awkward to bring this knight uh, out in, in many in many scenarios. Um, this is one way. In some cases, we'll see with the c5 variation, c5, d5. I had a game here. Uh, back in 2015 also in, with these kinds of ideas. Um, and, you know, of course, uh, e4, knight, g, e2 would be kind of a more uh, uh, expected, more natural, maybe upon bringing this bishop over to d3. Um, uh, so, so this is the main kind of an overview. Like I said, okay, let's just see what happened in my game against Anand. So d5, probably number one reaction. Okay, a3. All right. And um, here... Bishop c3, I had a game against Sergei Movsesian, uh, also ended in a draw. Uh, so this is one option. Let's maybe quickly kind of, I'll be showing this game anyway, uh, bc3, but basically this is the idea. Okay, there is one move, knight d5, this kind of uh, setup, very interesting play. Uh, also ed has happened in my game, followed by e3, okay. 
something like this. Very nice and creative. This variation basically is very aggressive from the white side, um, very creative. So if you know you're the kind of player who enjoys um, these kinds of these kinds of um, uh, ideas, you know, just kind of quickly going for the kill, uh, you will feel like fish in the water here. Um, uh, yeah, well, actually, you know, from both sides, black can also freely choose something that uh, stokes the fire easily there. Um, but okay, Anand here plays bishop e7. Uh, this okay e4 now. So so this is one case where white actually makes it to you know to get this wonderful center, and now it's on black uh, to kind of try to mess it up. This is played usually in all the games. Uh, there is also some idea c5 I believe where white, white will be pushing uh, this and capturing here. Uh, also very interesting play. Okay, d, e, f, e, and I used to be convinced that only c5 is, an, is a real move, but there are some recent games where c5 was played, I believe, by Daniel Dubov uh, from Russia, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, uh, okay d, e, f, e, e5, okay, d5, back to my game. Bishop c5, okay, so this is all theory. There's game um, uh, Nakamura Carlsen here, a very famous game where Nakamura was winning against Carlsen, but then uh, in a winning position kind of uh, messed up everything and lost. Um, but okay, uh, it will uh, uh, just see, okay, Bishop c5, Bishop g5, okay, pinning this knight over here. Um, so what does black get here with this center? Well, first of all, you know, these dark scores are weak. Um, another thing is d4 square. Uh, we'll see that uh, black has easy time placing the bishop there. Um, so, so basically, black's uh, you know idea here is maybe maybe white is is a bit overextended, um, and he will try to pick up on some of those weaknesses, uh, you know, to try to bring about some kind of an attack. Uh, uh, against white's excessive space. White, if he, if he can correctly, you know, use this space, um, then of course he will be he will be ahead. Um, I, I had another game here in this variation uh, against uh, uh, also a, a grandmaster from Belarus, and I won. Um, so yeah, I'm quite fond of this particular line actually. Okay, let's see, Bishop G5 H6. And bishop h4. Um, we obviously don't want to take this, you know, without a good reason. That would be very detrimental to our dark squares along this diagonal and stuff. So, so bishop h4, bishop to d4. So this is what I was talking about. This bishop obviously looks really good uh, on d4. If he, Black can follow this up with the move c5, you know, to kind of like uh, to, to uh, make you know a stronghold out of this bishop um, that really fares well for, for for Black. So here, actually, I prepared a. Uh, there is some normal uh, options like queen c2. I think I've seen maybe knight g2 move also. Um, but uh, I, this move I had prepared myself, I don't think it was played before, and um, kind of maybe threw Anand a little bit off balance. Uh, he probably expected something, you know, he was prepared against. Um, knight b5, yeah, this basically I found uh, on my own. Um, basically, you know, trying to put in question the placement of this bishop. Um, and uh, maybe create a threat of bishop f6, you know, so queen can't capture because knight c7 and and uh, actually okay he figures out the, the correct way to react um and that being the move bishop b2 and now really it goes uh, um goes very uh, sharp here rook b1 and you know he's forced to make this move a6 okay um why well you know everything else is just not gonna be so good because this bishop can't uh, uh, you know um, go back to like a nice square on c5 or something. So this, uh, I believe, okay, I think just queen d4. This I'm not so sure about actually, but I remember this is quite good for white. Let me just remind myself. Okay, of course, yeah. So queen d4, pair of bishops, um, 
enough pieces to basically take care of the king also, because um, you know. But it's not like Black can can actually, um, you know, put into question the position of this king here. So, um, so of course a6 and captures on f6. Now queen f6, of course, is again impossible because of knight c7. So this is the only move. So I kind of use a good spot there, you know, to um, to force black to capture with the pawn, uh, which black doesn't want to do, of course. Of course. Uh, so this, and now I, uh, this I had prepared. So what is the point, you know, of these exchanges for white? Uh, uh, you know, why would I want to do that uh, here? So, well, first of all, my structure is better, right? Okay, so... Uh, I, I don't have any double pawns. Black has double pawns here. I, I have a very nice passed pawn on d5 that may become very strong. It hinders Black's ability to, to develop, uh, you know, to, to bring his pieces over here. Um, and um, yeah, so so that that's you know definitely uh, uh, definitely one thing. Uh, but okay, you know uh, maybe. Black's plus is that uh, these squares may become weaknesses. Actually, Anand found a nice way to kind of show that my pawns are not so great in the game, as we'll see. Um, it's hard to say whose king is uh, less safe. Mine is uncastled yet, you know, it's vulnerable to these tricky checks. But also Black King, you know, can't exactly go kingside. Um, queenside takes a long time. So very unclear kind of position. I, I know I, I had this analyzed, uh, not you know not like I prepared for this particular game. Again, this was again this was a rapid game, um, but you know I, I had this at the back of my mind, um, uh, you know remembering some of my analyses, um, and I knew that White should be favored a little bit here. Um, okay, but of course Anant is a brilliant player. It's not easy to kind of predict his ways here. Okay, Knight D7. Uh, this is the logical way to develop the best move. Okay, knight will be brought to c5. Bishop d7 and castles maybe. Okay, something like this. Okay, I go queen f3. This was still prepared. This move. Um, one idea is you know defending a3, uh, so there is no fork here. And another is the more aggressive. You know, I keep an eye on this, on this very, um, uh, on this pawn. Right, so he doesn't have the time to play. Knight c5, of course. Okay. Um, so yeah. So this and now he finds the best move again uh, to to counterattack because the last thing he wants is for me to kind of like play knight h3, okay, bishop d3 castles, and start you know pushing him around here um, on these files. Uh, he cannot be passive. Uh, you know, it's not like he will waste his time playing queen d6 like this or something like okay. Uh, something like this. Yeah, this he may get in trouble here. Uh, it won't be easy for him to play. So he has to be aggressive quickly, and you know he finds uh, the right way uh, of doing so by pushing d5. 